Members, this bill, this amendment, whatever you want to call it, we've heard it on this floor numerous times. I want to clear up a few things that I believe that this body has not been explained to properly, that the media has failed to grab properly, and that many people, all the hate-filled messages that we've received as a result. This bill and amendment has nothing, nothing to do with whether a child receives a lunch or not. Nothing to do. That is not what is being debated. This amendment and bill have nothing to do with poor kids or kids that can't afford a lunch at all. It's already against the law to take a lunch away from someone that is on those programs. I believe that this bill and amendment has become so politicized because certain folks on the outside of this building think that they can score political points on it. And we have been dragged around like a rag doll because of it. At the end of the day, what this is, is a mandate on our local schools. I have stood up here all session long. It has been difficult. It has been hard because most of the policies that are brought forth are wrapped in a good, a good effort. Members come, they're trying to solve a problem, and it feels good to just go along with it. But at the end of the day, I believe that we need to leave it up to our school districts and our locally elected officials to design the policy on this kind of stuff. When someone's liberty is not being trampled on, when it is a true local issue, it is best left in their hands. I went to Representative Giddings yesterday and I told her, after all of the bad media, all of the bad comments, the phone calls that were generated into my office, the attacks on my district director and public forums, everything else, I went to her and I said, thank you. Thank you, Representative Giddings, for doing exactly what I said we should do from the beginning which is allow these tough situations to be handled by individuals and organizations rather than out of Austin with a mandate. Mr. And Speaker. I pledged to her yesterday. I want you all to know this. Mr. Faircloth. We never put this in the media. We yield, never put it in the Just one second and then Just I will hear. I went to her privately, one-on-one. -on -one. I didn't tell anyone else in this body. We didn't go to the media or anything. When I heard that her solution after this bill dying was to go to the private sector and pay down the debt with a nonprofit, I said, thank you. That is what I advocate for every day. I want to be a part of it. I promised her that I would personally give money, and I pledged to try and raise more money for it too. This isn't about whether we should be helping these kids or not or having a compassionate heart. This discussion and my opposition to this bill has been on one simple thing, whether this should be handled by the government or should be handled by communities and individuals. And that's why I'm asking you to vote against this mandate today and then turn around and join with me so that we as a community, as Texans, as individuals can choose to have an impact rather than sitting here and voting for a mandate. Mr. Speaker, will the gentleman yield for a question? This is the gentleman yield. I yield. Gentleman yields, Mr. Faircloth. Mr. Stiglin, did, did you read the amendment? I did read the amendment, yes. Okay. Are you familiar with this part where it says that it must allow a student whose meal card or account balance is exhausted or insufficient to continue for a period of time determined by the board of directors? That is correct. Okay. To, to, and it says for them to purchase meals by accumulating a negative balance on the student's card, otherwise receiving an extension of credit from the district. So we're allowing, we, we're, te we're telling, yes, we're telling, we're saying that the school board shall adopt a policy. Is, is, that, is that accurate? That is correct. Okay. You think that's unreasonable? I do think it's unreasonable. Okay. I think that they can come up with this all by themselves. I don't think that we should be micromanaging the local school districts. I, listen, I, I talk to the educators, I talk to the, the, the people in my district who work at our schools in the cafeteria and everything else. No one is going to be okay with lunch shaming. I'm sure that this has happened in a couple of instances, but guess what? There is evil that exists in the world. But 99.999% of people who have chosen to go into public education and serve children and serve this state would never stand for that kind of stuff. And many of the school districts, I talked to them in my district, they already have policies. So this simply came down to whether Austin should be bullying these folks into doing something else again to score some political points or not. 
And that's why I stood up, and that's why I'm going to stand up on the local and consent calendar later today, and I'm going to knock down every single unfunded mandate on the schools, and I'm going to allow them to make the decision for themselves with the caveat that no one's personal liberties and rights are infringed upon. It's just a principle of mine. It's not always easy. It wasn't yeah. easy when we talked about the video cameras last session. It wasn't easy on any of this stuff. I don't believe Representative Giddings is, is trying to be a jerk about this. I think she's well-intentioned. I just think the method in which she is pursuing it is wrong. That is what I stand in objection to. What it appears, and maybe you can correct me here, but what it appears that she's trying to do is to help formulate public policy here and in, in helping provide some guidance for school boards to develop a policy. I, I understand that's what she's trying to do. I don't think that's the proper role of government. I think these folks are more than capable of develop, realizing they need to develop their own policy. Many of them have. There's nothing in law that prevents them from doing that right now. And uh, that's just where I stand. Well, un unfortunately, uh, being a parent is a challenge. It, it requires a, a lot of diligence, a lot of work, and yet most folks uh, trying to raise a family, trying to balance a budget, trying to earn a living, trying to make certain that they can be providers and protectors for their family, sometimes they forget to deposit money into this account. I understand, Representative Faircloth, and, and here's what I will tell you. I believe that government exists to protect the rights of individuals to live the li their lives the way they see fit. I do not think it is the proper role of government to try and change, manipulate, or influence behavior. I believe that's left up to the individual and not government. So when I hear policies that say we're trying to steer them in a certain direction, that is not why government exists. They exist to protect my right to do that the way I see fit. And I, and I respect that. And that's why we have open debate here, and that's why we can agree and disagree on what that policy should look like. Absolutely. So, thank you. Mr. Speaker, will the gentleman yield? Mr. Stickland, do you yield? I yield. When did you find out about this amendment being coming under this bill? The, listen, this, this is Did been, you know until today that that, bill, that amendment was being put on? I, I've received threats and, and snide remarks ever since the bill originally went down. Representative Tenderholt, that this would come up. It was so going to be shoved down our throats, everything else. Weren't, we, weren't you and I just talking last night about how excited we were that she came up with another solution and then we couldn't wait to help donate to that organization? That's exactly what we talked about we last We didn't know night. this amendment was coming up today, and we were talking about that last night, that nope. she found a private solution to it, and it was wonderful. Which is what we all advocate for here. And so I just... I. I hate that people think that you're against the idea of what she's trying to do because we want to donate to it. We just want a private solution for it. Is that correct? I think the private solution would end up better and have more meaning to those that are involved, especially for the children. So I, I want to commend her for coming up with the other solution that she came up with because really, truly, that's, that's a pretty a, a great way to solve and this And I want problem. to be clear that I look forward to personally being involved in a private solution. I will be voting no against this amendment today. I hope that you guys understand where I'm coming from. And regardless, um, rather than using government, that individually we can look to solve this problem together. Thank Please you. vote no on the amendment.